Hey guys, it's John from Seattle Coffee Gear. We're in the commercial kitchen doing a more in-depth commercial crew review of the Rocket Espresso Boxer. Today we're going to look at the inside of this machine and dive in a little deeper into the programming functions of this machine. Let's take a look. Here are the internals of the Boxer. We have this massive steam boiler here and you can see uh, the heat exchangers where those are coming out of the machine. As you look at this, like I was saying in a previous video, it's super simple what's in here and everything is really easy to get to. Um, there's not, it wouldn't be very difficult to remove the pump to fix that down there. Um, it wouldn't be easy or difficult to remove any of these electronic components. These steam wands are super simple. That's something that over the years, uh, you will have to rebuild those eventually but they are very easy to get to, very easy to rebuild and repair those. Overall, just a very simple machine. Um, here you have your uh, flow meters. It's controlling the volumetrics of the machine. Um, you have your pipes going from your heat exchangers into the groups. Um, these screws were taken out by our commercial support tech when he was checking out the internals of this machine. Um, yeah, overall, very simple. This boiler, although it looks like it is made out of stainless steel, it is actually just a coating on it that is a copper boiler. Uh, and that is a 8.3 liter boiler. That is absolutely massive. Uh, dwarfs a lot of other boilers out there. Well, that pretty much wraps up all the internals of this machine. Uh, I'll get this back on and we'll talk about some of the programming functions on the Boxer. Let's talk about the programming on this Boxer here. So in another video, I talk about the fact that you just hold this down and then it enters into a programming mode, but we'll talk a little bit more about that. So I like to program this first button for like a four second rinse or so, and then I'll program this double shot button for my actual shot pulling. Um, and so let's cover that real quick here. So I'm gonna talk about how I program the volumetrics on this machine. Um, I'm gonna start out by giving that a rinse. And I have that set up to do a rinse for about the time that I like. I have this grinder set to dose at 20 grams. And the parameters that I'm looking for with this specific coffee is about one to two. And what I mean by that is I have 20 grams of coffee that I'm putting in, 20 grams of ground coffee that I'm putting into this basket here. And so I'm gonna program this machine to do 40 grams out. So once I get this in here, I'm holding this button down to start it in that programming mode. There it goes. I'm gonna start my timer as well. And this is a slightly lighter roasted espresso. So for me, I like those to pull a little bit longer just to extract more flavor out of them. Make sure I'm catching all of that. And then I'm gonna shut that off once I get to 40 grams. If you'll notice that's still flashing. And once that turns off, it is now out of that programming mode. So that is how I program the volumetrics on an espresso machine. Uh, one thing that this does have is an auto back flush setting and to activate that, you just press the P button and then that first cup, and then it runs through its cycle of going on and then off. And it rests and then starts again. And this would be if I had a blank portafilter in here and I was running some Kefiza or other cleaning agent through that, or just doing it with water in the middle of the day. One important note to make as I stop that is if you are back flushing, make sure you have 
your dispersion screens in place there. That's gonna prevent any coffee or anything else from flowing back up and into your solenoid valve. And even a small particle can clog your solenoid valve, which can be really costly to repair because you have to get it into the machine and sometimes replace that entire thing, which is an added expense that you could have prevented by just taking 30 extra seconds and putting your screens back up in there. This has the same design and setup as the Rocket R9 does, where it's a three millimeter Allen key holding the screw that's holding the screen in. And then there's a heat sink behind that or a dispersion block behind that. Uh, it's very similar. Um, and you just wanna make sure that both of those are in there before you back flush to protect your machine and make sure it lasts a really long time. The programming works the exact same when it comes to all the rest of those buttons and the hot water. So that's now programmed. I'm going to see something here once it goes out of that. So your hot water can be programmed individually, as you just see there. And if I reprogram this side of the hot water. Wait till that stops. It does not affect this right side here. That's important to note because if you program this left side, uh, all four of these buttons will transfer over to this. The hot water does not transfer over. Those must be programmed individually. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look at some of the internals of the Rocket Boxer and some of the programming functions of the Rocket Boxer. If you have any questions or comments, please leave us a note down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. If you've ever thought about opening up your own coffee shop, and you want some advice about equipment or you want to upgrade your equipment, please give our commercial team a call. We'd love to chat that through with you. I hope this has been an informative video. Thank you guys for watching and have a great day.